It's always nice when there are good games on sale and this week's looking particularly tasty. I won't be covering the Square Enix games as I featured those in last week's video, but regardless there are more than enough to choose from. Thanks for all the new subscribers, it really is incredible the amount of people that seem to want to watch our content. Our free game this week has actually been donated by Cultured Bucket, who's an active member from our Discord community, and the absolute legend remembered that Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is actually leaving the eShop on March the 31st, so bought a copy for us to give away. What an absolute star. To win, just be subscribed and leave a comment down below and actually Cultured Bucket is going to pick the winner. And thanks to the person who gave me some really good feedback on the avoids section. This week's avoids will be slightly improved and a touch more in-depth than you've seen before. So stick around to the end of the video for those. Alright then, what's on sale this week? Well, let's find out. First up we've got Graveyard Keeper, I really enjoyed this, it's like a dark and macabre Stardew Valley where you play as a Graveyard Keeper but there's also a good chunk of sim in here and crafting, there's a town where you can talk to the locals but the twist is that dead bodies are obviously delivered to you and then you have to deal with them. This may involve removing certain body parts and preparing them nicely and then burying them neatly in the graveyard. It's such an odd concept but it strangely works. There is a storyline here as well, but I won't go too far into details because it's quite easy to potentially spoil that one. There is a link in the pinned comment if you want to check out our full review, but you're looking at 793 megs, about 50 to 100 hours of gameplay, but it's also quite easy to pick up and play. It's 50% off at £8.99 and that goes on until April the 12th. Next up then, one that I've never mentioned before, and Glenn is a huge fan of these games, it's the Pinball FX3, the Bethesda Pinball Bundle, which has the Fallout, Doom, and Skyrim tables. Now, I know this isn't for everyone, but maybe you've never actually considered it. It's only about three quid, so it's crazy cheap at the moment at 66% off, and they manage to cram so much from your favorite titles into those tables. It's great to try and beat those high scores, and obviously you've got the leaderboards, global leaderboards, and score tracking, and yeah, they're surprisingly well done, they're really fun to play, and if you find that you enjoy them, you'll also note that there are many other tables available, including ones based on the Alien games, Jurassic Park, and even Portal. A bit of a left field one this, but I think there's probably one or two of you out there that might like something a bit different. That sale goes on until March the 25th. Bring it on. Some games are perfect sales pickups, and one that's always on sale, but really it's a stupidly low price and potentially there are some of you that don't know about it and that's the way remastered what i really loved about this was how much it reminded me of old classic adventure titles but in a slightly different form factor with incredible music and really a lovely narrative drive that starts out with such a uh, well i don't want to spoil it but it starts out in a really engrossing way now it goes a bit wonky about the well I don't know three quarters of the way in it does go a little bit wonky but it's still worth experiencing and worth seeing out to the end you're looking at about seven or eight hours to complete it and at 89p 93% off that goes on until March the 28th Then we've got the brilliant Shadows of Adam from Circle Entertainment. I was gutted that I wasn't able to review this retro JRPG as I was really enjoying it. It's got a great sense of humour about it as well, but essentially it's like a love letter to 16-bit JRPGs. It's not your run-of-the-mill storyline, it's not going to make you think, oh hang on, I've seen and done this a hundred times before. It's a little bit self-referential and it has an excellent soundtrack. It's currently 50% off, taking it down to £6.74 or your regional equivalent. That's its all-time lowest price and it ends on April the 7th. It's 1.2 gigs as well, so not too bad. It will take you around about 15 to 20 hours to do everything.
Then we've got the Friends of Ringo Ishikawa, which again comes from Circle Entertainment. And if you're familiar with games like Shenmue, then you're going to understand kind of the way this plays out, except it's in that 2D perspective. It's a very unique feel in this one, and it's really a game I enjoyed. You'll have your daily routines and things that you can optionally choose to do, and there's a strong storyline that runs through the whole thing. You'll be picking fights with other gang members, trying to make some money, keep your player fed, but also studying and going to bars and things like that. In my opinion, this one's underrated. I really enjoyed it. It's 40% off, taking it down to 8 quid, which is its all-time best price, and that goes on until April the 7th. going to go out on a limb and say that this next one is potentially a hidden gem. It's called Element and Glenn reviewed it on the channel. It's a real-time strategy space game that has a really distinctive and unique style but actually plays out quite quickly. The premise goes that you're escaping a decaying solar system and you have to visit each planet, mine enough element and defeat the enemy to progress onto the next. You can then build attack and defensive units and try and maintain the synergies with the planets. I think Glenn quite enjoyed this and we were quite surprised by how much attention it got at the time. It's only about £5.50 or your regional equivalent and that sale goes on until April the 1st. It's also a tiny download at 152 megs so I think developer Flightless have a little bit of a gem with this one. Then we've got God's Will Fall, which I absolutely loved. I thought it was brilliant. I know not everyone quite enjoyed it as much as me, but at 25% off, taking it down to £14.99, I'd strongly recommend it. Let me talk you through the premise. You shipwreck upon an island, home of the torturous gods, and you'll have eight Celtic survivors, whom each have unique abilities. And again, each time you fully die, so all of them perish, you'll restart with a brand new band. But hopefully it won't come to that. You'll move around the island, entering different dungeon layers and trying to defeat the monster at the end of them. If you perish, man, I've said perish a lot. But if you do, then someone else in the party might have to come and rescue you. But what's very cool is when someone dies, like their brother might get really enraged and it'll boost their perks. So it makes it slightly easier for them. But if you decide, no, I'm not going to go in and save them and move on to another dungeon, then their stats will drop right down because they're devastated. I thought it was really good. I enjoyed the system. There's the potential, if you're good, to complete the game in about four hours. And they are already working on the next lot of DLC and updates for the title. So I think it's one that has a lifespan beyond those four hours. Well, but it will take you way longer than that, really. This sale goes on until March the 31st, and it's a 6.7 gigabyte download. Then there's Unto the End, which didn't get much coverage at all when it came out back in December. It describes itself as a challenging handcraft adventure, and you play as a father who basically goes for, through a brutal journey to try and make his way back home. You've got a sword, a dagger, and a torch, and there are some interesting mechanics here, like having to hold on to that torch, but when you're fighting, you might drop it to the ground, and you really do need it, and the combat has a system of parries and counters and is 100% skill based so essentially you have to learn to to get better. I really like the art direction, I think it looks really nice, it runs well. It is brutally difficult at times and you know there's potential for frustration there so it's for certain types of players, maybe people that like things like Dark Souls and Salt and Sanctuary as I think if you combine those two together that's the closest you're going to get to the feeling that this one gives. It'll take you about mm, five to eight hours I reckon to finish this one and it has a 2.4 gigabyte download and will set you back £15.74 or your regional equivalent. Over on the US side then, you guys are really lucky. You've probably got the best deals this week. And all I need to say is that 2K games currently are on sale over in the US on the eShop at 60% plus off. So you're looking at things like XCOM 2, which is 70% off, taking it down to $14.99. I went back and played this a bit the other day and there are still a few performance issues here, but overall, it's really an enjoyable experience and building up your team and just going on that classic feeling XCOM experience with all the nice modern twists. It's it's just such a good game and quite a rarity in its style on the Nintendo Switch. 
Also, you've got the Bioshock titles, great, worth picking up. Civilization 6 is also on sale if you're interested in that, as well as Borderlands. So yeah, this segment is all about the 2K games. So if you're interested in any of those or you've had them on your wish, wish list, now is the time to pick those up. And those sales go on until the 1st of April. Quite a few people asked me if uh, Kingdoms of Amala was the better game out of Dragon's Dogma and, and it. And in all honesty, I think Dragon's Dogma is a superior title overall. It has amazing combat, some of the best combat in any RPG, with the ability to climb up your enemy and stab them in the back. And it has some really interesting systems as well, which I just haven't really seen used in an awful lot of games. At 50% off its all-time lowest price in the US, this is one you should definitely pick up. It's incredible. We've got a full review of it on the channel and I'm sure if I haven't managed to do it in these few seconds, that review will convince you that it is worth your money. It's a 12.1 gigabyte download, so quite chunky. And it's going to take around about, well, it says on here 57 hours to complete, but no way, not for me. At least 100 hours, I think, if you want to find and do most of the things available in the game. Which takes us on to the avoids. Now what's changed about our avoids this week? Well, I'm going to try and give you a little bit more details rather than just don't buy this. It's absolute garbage. Don't worry, that's still going to be in there. I'll try and give you a few more details on top of that. First up, we've got a rest of a stone buddha i thought coming from circle entertainment this was going to be quite a lot like friends of ringo ishigawa which is in this video because it's awesome but unfortunately not what i really didn't like about it was its difficulty balancing to the point of just not being fun you can move left and right you have different a couple of different weapons and enemies will just be flooding the screen from both sides and unfortunately little things like clunky controls like bringing up the gun to shoot sometimes doesn't work and you'll get killed or shooting Pressing the button to pull the trigger sometimes doesn't register and you'll get killed. And because it changes each time in terms of which direction the enemies come from, one crack at the level will be absolutely, well, it won't be fine. It'll be horrible and you'll get killed. But the second time, you'll get killed much quicker. Um, it's not a case of just getting good with this. It feels like it's not balanced right. And for that reason, for me, it would be an avoid. And then we've got Solo Islands of the Heart, which looked like a lovely, quirky, Wind Waker style adventure, but turned out to be the hottest of garbage. Now, I'm all for walking simulator style games and with a bit of puzzle thrown in. And in fact, some of my favorite games are in that genre. But unfortunately, the puzzles here are incredibly uninspired. It's dull. You'll find yourself walking around and the game has the narrative where it assumes that you're going to be fully engaged in what it's saying. But it comes across as pretentious and a little bit cringy, in all honesty. It left a bad taste in my mouth and for me, it would certainly be an avoid. So that's it for this week. Be sure to subscribe. Congratulations to the winners of a free game from last week. Remember, all we do is reply to comments and yeah, we pick the occasional ones and say, well done, you've won a game. Do go and check out the best games coming this week. It's looking like a decent one. And I know these sales are going to be, or potentially all avoids for many of us because we'll be wanting to buy Monster Hunter and a few of the other good looking ones this week. Thanks to our patrons. You guys are awesome. And to all of you who watch the channel, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers, guys. See y'all.